Yes, Agatha. Um, last time I remember we studied about the mechanical properties of matter. There are examples and we like broadened each of the examples that we studied, like strength, stiffness, ductility, brittleness, elasticity. Then um, we ended with a Hooke's law and also calculated. That is what I remember. Okay, so me, I wanted to know whether we are learning form to work or form for work. Me, okay, like number one, the number one you gave us, uh, me, I tried it and it defeated me, but I saw it in my sister's book and yet she's in form four. Now the work that we are doing is S2 and we are following our new curriculum books. Because if you are here in... Uh, as we are gaining S2, I think we had gone through machines, if I'm not mistaken. Then when we joined this time, we had to look at the mechanical properties, which is S2 work of first term. Though many times in our schools, uh, we, are, we are behind. Some of you have been still covering S1 work. But the work we are covering is purely S2 work. Okay, any other, any person who was, who was there in the lesson to state for us Hook's Law? Any person to state for us Hook's Law? Canon. Um, the Hooke's law states that the extension of a material is directly proportional to the applied force, provided the elastic limit is not exceeded. Okay, thank you. Uh, it states that the extension of an elastic material is uh, directly proportional to the extension provided uh, the, the, the elastic limit is not exceeded. That's the extension being directly proportional to the force that causes it, provided the extension is not, the ex elastic limit, sorry, is not exceeded. Agatha, you have something to say? I think you are lost. Okay. Now, the things that we are looking at uh, as we are here on our Zoom lessons, we normally 
uh, we used the, the syllabus books that we are following in schools according to which class. Now, for those people who are there, I think uh, in January, as we are, we are getting into S2, we looked at work, power, and energy, and I think machines. Then as we finished machines, the next topic, which has to be in the first term of S2, is supposed to be mechanical properties that we are looking at. And in those mechanical properties, that is where we looked at uh, what we know as uh, the stiffness, the ductility, all those things. And then we looked at hook slope in our first lesson. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through again the calculations for hook slope and also continue with some few things as, uh, as we continue with our work. So are we all able to see the white screen, the white board? We are able to see the white board. Then we are going to uh, start our lesson. I just want you to focus such that what I write, you can easily note it down also if you need to. Now, uh, in our lesson last time, we said uh, that if we are to look at the hook slow, we said that the extension, the extension of an elastic material an elastic material is directly proportional, directly proportional to the applied force Applied force provided uh, the elastic limit is not exceeded. Okay, that is our uh, definition for, oh, sorry, that is our statement for the Hooke's law, and it has features in it, uh, which we need to know. Those features are extension. Then the other one is elastic material. Then another one is elastic limit. Now the statement, we discussed it together last time. And we said that if this one is hooks, Book slow for those ones who are copying something, who are writing them the notes down. This is Hooks. Hooks was a physicist who came up with this law after working with forces and extensions. Now, Hooks law talks about an elastic material. I'm sure each one of us here. Uh, if you were in the last lesson, you know what an elastic material is. A material which has that uh, 
property called elasticity. We said that elasticity, uh, to take you back a little, we said that elasticity, elasticity, we said it is the ability of a material to regain its shape or to regain its original shape when a deforming force is removed. So we said that those materials that when you put a force on them, they stretch. But when you remove the force, they gain back their original shape. Those materials are called elastic materials. And we gave ourselves examples such as rubber band and a spring. A spring or what people call sepulinji. So after knowing what an elastic material is, that this elastic material regains its original shape when a force which was deforming it is removed, then we go back to our Hooke's law, knowing that our elastic material is a material that stretches, but then when you remove uh, the stretching material, you bring it, it, it comes back, the shape, the shape of uh, uh, that material comes back to its original shape. Now, extension, what does it mean? If this is our material, the one I'm drawing here, if it's our material, for example, a spring, like that, uh, if that is the spring, and this spring has a length, maybe from here to there, the length of that spring is L naught. The zero there shows that it's the original length. If that spring, Uh, comes up and then we add on so if we add a force or if we add a weight if we attach a weight on our spring our spring will become longer it is stretching because it's an elastic material so what happens is that at first it had a length L naught, but now it's going to be having a new length which is longer than the original. And that length here, I'm going to call it L1, meaning that it's a new length. Now our spring was ending at this point where you see the red line, but now it is extending that point there. Now the difference between the two lengths L1 and L0 is what we call extension. This difference here is what we call extension. And we get extension from new length minus the original original length. So our extension therefore will be got from the L1. L1 is the length when we have put the mass on or when this force is attached minus L0, which is our original length. 
So that is what extension means. The applied force is this F that you see here down and elastic limit. To explain elastic limit well, you know when we have a rubber band, you stretch it, it regains back its shape. But there is a point that when you stretch that rubber band, it either loses shape or even breaks. Now, that is what we call the elastic limit, that when you stretch it a lot, it reaches a point where it can't regain back its shape. So that point is called the elastic limit. Now, provided that limit is not exceeded, provided we are still in the limit of elastic elasticity, when, when you remove a force, it goes back to its original shape, then they are telling us that the force applied, which is F, the force applied, which is F, is directly proportional to E, where E is the extension. So that means that C, when I have a force, now in, uh, in mathematics, when you find a, a, a symbol like that, which is the proportionality symbol, it is replaced by equal to any constant. So you can choose any letter to call it a constant. Now that K that you see there, we call it the proportionality constant, or in this topic here, which we are looking at, that K is called the 4C constant. So A is called the force constant. So this is the Hooke's law if we are to write it into an equation. It is F is equal to K E, where K is a force constant. Constant means that it is the same throughout. Each force and its extension will always give you the same K if you are dealing with the same spring. So that is the uh, where we started, where we stopped at uh, last time. The topic is mechanical properties of matter. For those ones who are asking what topic we are covering, mechanical properties of matter and its S2 first terms work in the syllabus book for the new curriculum that we are following. Uh, okay, after, after getting to that, after finishing and uh, knowing what uh, the, the, the law states as, we went ahead and we tried some calculations. And if you still have questions that we did last time, I'm going to ask one of you, if you have your question with you, I'm going to ask one of you to read us a question and then we go through it here as a team. Any person who has the question with you? Viola, you unmute and read for us the question. A vertical spring of length 30 centimeters is stretched to 36 cent centimeters when an object of mass 100 grams is placed, in, is placed in a pan attached to it. The spring is stretched to 40 centimeters when a mass of 200 grams is placed in the pan. Find the mass of the pan. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, continue. First, first read for me, again. A, a vertical spring of length 30 centimeters mm. stretched to 36 centimeters of an object 
36 centimeters. Mm -hmm. of, an, of an object of mass 100 grams. Mass 100 grams. Gram. Mm. Mm -hmm. is, is placed in the pan attached to it. Mm. The spring is stretched to 40 centimeters when a mass of 200 grams is placed in the pan. The spring is stretched to 40 centimeters. Mm. When? When a mass of 200 grams is placed in the pan. Mass of 200 grams is placed in the pan. Mm -hmm. Find the mass of the pan. Okay. Yeah. This was forty two. No, forty. Forty, eh? Yes. Okay, now. You can you can mute your microphone. <clears throat> now, for us to get mass of the pan, we have to sketch. First of all, we had a spring like that with nothing placed on it. And that spring had a length of 30 centimeters. Then when that same spring, uh, we had a pan added and on that pan there was a mass of 100 grams. The length extended or stretched to, so that means the length of the spring changed from 30 now to 36 centimeters. And then also, uh, what we have here, when we put a mass of 200 grams in the pan, now these ones here, 200 grams, the extension that we have here becomes 40 centimeters. Now they are asking us, what is the mass of the pan? Now what we are going to do, or what you are going to help me with, I want you to convert all the, the length to meters and all the masses to kilograms. In your books, where you are, you do that for us, please. You change all the masses to kilograms and all the distances to meters. We put our answers in the chat.
we are changing uh, length, which are in centimeters to meters, and the masses, we are changing them to, 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 to kilograms. Okay, our L naught, which is 30 centimeters, will become 0 0.3. The 36 will become 0 0.36. And the 40 will become 0 0.4 meters. Why? Because uh, we divide by 100 if we are changing to meters Martha, we are just changing these things we have we have read for us the question and what we are doing now is changing to the si units such that we start uh, working out we have not yet started doing anything uh, much so the only thing you have to do is convert this to meters and then to kilograms, then you, you follow up. Okay, masses, anyone who has changed masses? Two kilograms, a hundred grams, and two hundred grams. Patricia says a hundred grams is zero point one kilogram. Yes. So we have 0 0.1 kilograms, and we also have 0 0.2 kilograms. So we have a spring which had original length 0 0.3 meters because it had 30 centimeters. And now when they added 100 grams, on a scale pan, so that is our scale pan there. 100 grams we have seen, they give us 0 0.1. So the whole thing, the whole thing here, the mass and the scale pan, I'm going to call the mass of the scale pan M, what they, they, are, they want us to determine. I'm going to call it M, such that what is here, in the box, as you see that is 0 0.1 plus M, where M is mass of the scale pan. And what is here is 0 0.2 plus M, because now we are getting the mass of the load which is there and the scale pan itself. Now, from our Hooke's law, we saw that F, which is force, is equal to constant K, which is the force constant, then times E, which is the extension. Sorry, my other device has gone off. So let us use this one uh, as, we, as we continue.
I was saying uh, they give us uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. They gave us a question. Someone read for us a question that we had a spring of length 0 0.3, original length, and now the spring changed from 0 0.3 uh, to 0 0.36 when they put a mass of 100 grams on a scale pan. And then when they put another mass of 200 grams on the scale pan, we had the length changing to 0 0.4. Please let us focus. If you want to say something in the chat, I will ask you to ask your questions, then I will answer them because you can't understand when you are not paying attention. Now, we stated Hooke's law for those ones who have been here as uh, the product of the force constant times extension E. And we also said that extension is original length out of, sorry, minus the new length. Now, if you look at, uh, if you look at the first two things where the extension had nothing on it, and when it had a mass of uh, 100 grams on it, we had our length changing from 0 0.3 to 0 0.36. So from there, we get our extension as 0 0.06 meters. We get our extension as 0 0.06 meters. That is for when our mass was the, uh, 0 0.1 kilograms or the 100 grams that they gave us. But I told you uh, before we lost the other device, I was telling you that now the effective uh, mass here, because they want the mass of the scale pan, the 100 grams plus the mass that we are looking for are the ones that we are going to use. So the mass that we are going to use is going to be for the first case, 0 0.1 plus M. I've told you that M is the mass of the scale pan and it's what we are going to be looking for. Whereas 0 0.1, they gave it to us because they told us that when a mass of 100 grams was put in a scale pan, the length changed to 0 0.36. So I'm going to use 0 0.1 plus M and I get my answer that I'm looking for, for that case. Now, how we have got the 0 0.06, I'm going to uh, clear this. And then we continue. Now we know that the extension is 0 0.06. Is 0 when the mass is 0 0.1 plus M, that is our first case. Then in the second case, we had our mass of 200 grams. So it will be M as 0 0.2 plus M. And this mass here caused an extension from L which was 30 to L now which became 40. 
So you got from me 40 as 0 0.4, and then uh, the other one was 0 0.3. So we got our extension now as 0 0.1 meters. These ones are meters. So now we have two things. We have extension and mass. Let me call it E1 and M1, and then mass 2 and extension 2. We have extensions and masses. So you copy those ones down. The mass 1, extension 1, mass 2, extension 2. And then after copying them, we are going to rub them out, and then we get into the the hook slow that we have to use. Agatha, your hand is up. Anything you wanted to ask before we continue? No, sir. Okay, you can lower your hand. Then Priscilla, your hand is up. Anything that you wanted to ask? Okay, teacher, how did you get the 0 0.1 plus M1? M1? Okay, you listen, they gave us a... Uh, a mass of 100 grams. Eh? Yes. They told us that when they put a mass of 100 grams into a scale pan whose mass is not known, you don't know the mass of the scale pan. Eh? The length changed from 30 to 36. And since we changed the length to meters, that's how we got extension 0 0.06, because it was from 0 0.3, which is 30, to 0 0.36, which is 36. And then, because it's 100 grams, we had to change it to kilograms. And on changing to kilograms, we got 0 0.1. And oh. because, yeah, because we, what caused the extension is both the scale pan and the mass that they put there. That's why we are saying that the mass that caused the extension is 0 0.1 plus M, where M is mass of the scale pan. So you've got that? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm um, assuming that all of us have finished uh, copying, 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 copying that those two things that we have, I want us to apply them now in the hook slow. Remember, uh, in the hook slow, we have it that F is equal to Ke. Now we all know that F is force. And if I have a mass and I want a force, I multiply by acceleration due to gravity, which is 10. But uh, I don't want you to bother with that. Instead of M, we are going, instead of force F, we are going to use mass M because uh, because we, we, we are having, uh, we are having uh, masses, even we are having two masses. So that means even if we don't, uh, multiply with the acceleration due to gravity, we can work with them. So instead of F, where there is F, we are going to put 10, sorry. We are going to put our mass for the first one, which is M1, 0 0.1 plus M is equal to a constant times E. Our E is 0 0.06, that is the first E. Now, if you know how to make K the subject, making K remain alone, it will be equal to 0 0.1 plus M, then divide by 
0 0.06. I've made K the subject in my expression, F is equal to KE. Then if I use the second set of values, you realize that my 0 0.2 plus M will be equal to K times, remember we got the extension there as 0 0.1, the extension two. And if I'm to make K the subject here, I'll be having my K as 0 0.2 plus M out of 0 0.1. So you also write the case that we have written for both cases, and then we continue. Patricia, any question? Your hand is up. Yes. Mm. Okay, so the, the M for the frying pan, did, mm. did you just put it there either, like you can put any letter, or oh, it's supposed you to be M? You can put any letter. You can put any letter that you wish. Any okay. letter. Because it's what we are going to be looking for. Okay, after you have done that, uh, you realize that uh, you realize that we have uh, k being equal to this and also k being equal to this. So since both of them are equal to k, it will mean to us, I'm going to rub this one up here. It will mean to us, uh, uh, someone is asking why did I, why didn't I use the acceleration due to gravity? I'm going to show it here. Because 0 0.1 plus M out of 0 0.06 is going to be equal to 0 0.2 plus m out of 0 0.1. This is 0 0.2. Now realize that if I had used the 10 on the masses, if I use the 10 on the masses, the 0 0.1 plus m and then the 0 0.2 plus m, if I had multiplied each of them with 10, then if we reach this step that we are on now, you would you, you, you see that all the tens will cancel out. That's why I didn't bother you people with uh, using the acceleration due to gravity to get force, because the tens would cancel out at this point. Now, at this point, we, we are going to cross multiply. We are going to cross multiply and then you will be having 0 0.1 into bracket 0 0.1 plus M being equal to 0 0.06 into bracket 0 0.2 plus M. So I want you to use that equation and you find for me the value of M. Open brackets each of those things outside multiplies each of the things in the brackets and then you will collect like terms and then you find the value of m in kilograms you try it out and i see which answer we are getting I'm giving you four minutes to do that and then we come back and we discuss together
Yes, what is our now answer? For those ones who have calculated well. What is our answer? Okay, let us see what we'll be having. Uh, Okay, let us, let us do this together and we see the answers that we get. Uh, let us focus uh, on the blue, 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 blue writings. Now up here, we have 0 0.1 times 0 0.1. Which answers do we get? If you multiply 0 0.1, times 0 0.1, you get zero, uh, you get 0 0.01. I'm now opening brackets here. 0 0.01 plus 0 0.1 M is going to be equal to, then we multiply also these ones. Uh, these ones will be having 0 0.06 times 0 0.06 times 0 0.2. We'll be having 0 0.012, 0 0.012, then plus 0 0.06 M. Now on connect, collecting the like terms, on collecting like terms, we're going to have our point one uh, going and then uh, this is 0 0.6 going the other side. So we'll be having 0 0.1, 0 0.1 0 M. If this 0 0.06 M crosses the equal sign, it will become a negative and it will become negative 0 0.06. It's going to be equal to, now this side we have 0 0.012. And then if this 0 0.01 crosses the equal sign, it becomes minus also 0 0.01. So if you subtract these two things, uh, for the values that have M on them, we remain with 0 0.04. And for these ones, 0.04 M, whereas these ones will be 0 0.002. And then we divide through by 0 0.004, divide through by 0 0.004, 0 0.04, sorry. So we get our M as, so if you have your calculator, you help me and get the answer there. So the answer is 0 0.05 kilograms. That is our answer. James, you have your hand up. Sir, like it is, I got 0 0.55 after dividing. Wow, how, how did you get there? 
what did you divide with what? First check if you, 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 if you open your brackets well, because I think the problem for all of us came in when we are opening brackets. Uh, Priscilla, what do you want to say? Teacher, I got 0 0.5, not 0 0.005. 0 0.05. Why, why did you get that? No, I got 0 0.5. By dividing? Uh, 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.4. It is 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.004, 0 not 0 0.004. So you divide well, eh? Okay, sir. The, the four has one zero before the point, eh? It is 0 0.04, then the other one up is 0 0.002. Agatha? Okay, Sammy, my concern is like when you're collecting life terms, why don't you first do like you first subtract the ones without M, then you subtract the ones with M? I think that is what I've done. Though my space was small, I couldn't write them on the same lines. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let us have another, I think we are going to have another example, another question. Anyone who kept, anyone who kept the questions because I also don't have them here, but I will add them in our first lesson. Who is reading for us number two? Yes, Agatha. Agatha. If you have the question, read for us. Okay, number two, a force of 500 Newtons extends a wire by two millimeters. Now, Agatha, excuse me, if you don't have the questions, please, as she reads, I write the question down so that you don't ask me which question are we answering, where have you got the, the 2.2 millimeters? So, Agatha, I read for them so that they can write the questions. Okay. A force of 500 Newtons extends a wire by two millimeters. A force of 500 Newtons extends a wire okay. by two millimeters. If the Come force again. is a force yes, of 500 newtons extends a wire by two millimeters. If the force is reduced by a half, if the force is reduced by a half, what will be the new length of the wire if the original length is 10 centimeters? Sairi read. You read once, once more, just once. A force of 500 Newtons extends a wire by two millimeters. If the force is reduced by a half, what will be the new length of the wire if the original length was is 10 centimeters? Okay, thank you Agatha for reading. You're welcome. 
All right, so we're going to uh, go through that question together. I think you have written it down. Uh, the first thing you should note is that all things should be in their respective SI units. For example, length, all length must be in meters. So what you should help me with is to put your length in meters first. Everything that has length in it, put it in meters. Everything length, put it in meters. All right, we are going to go through our question uh, and see what our answer is going to be. So our question uh, was uh, clear to all of us. Maybe someone should uh, we take us through them, through those things that we need to know so as we can calculate well. Who is there? read for us one more time just to go through the question just to make sure each one of us has uh, the correct thing Agatha read for us and so question two eh? yes a force of 500 newtons extends a wire by two millimeters if the force is reduced by a half 
what will be the new length of the wire if the original length is 10 centimeters? So we have a force of 500 newtons extends a wire by two millimeters, eh? Yes. So they are asking us what would be you continue for me as I write here so that I have all the okay. quantities. Mm. So they are asking us let me see. Oh if the force is what what will be the new length? Okay, like if the by two millimeters, if the mm. force is reduced by a half. Mm. What will be the new length of the wire if the original length is 10 centimeters? So original length is 10 centimeters and they want yes. us to get the new length. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, you can mute now. So according to what we have, we can only get the new length if we know the extension caused by the change in force. So that is what we are going to look for first. If you look at the things that we have, we have a force and extension. That means this one can help us get the K, which is the springy constant. So I told you to change the extension to millimeters. That, sorry, the extension, which is millimeters, we want it in meters. So that extension, I'm going to call it E1 and I'm going to call force 500 F1 also. So our extension one, which is two millimeters, if I'm to change it to meters, it's going to be two out of 1,000. So it's going to be two out of 1,000, which will give us something like zero point zero zero two meters. So they gave us F, we know that F is supposed to be equal to the spring constant times E. That means our 500, which is the Newtons is going to be equal to K, which we don't have, times the extension, which is 0 0.002. So we are going to have 0 0.002 times K, which is the constant that we are looking for. Now, after there, we divide through by 0 0.02 on both sides. 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.002 so that we get our k as so what will be the value of k and i have answers in the chat if you have your calculators with you Yes, people are giving me 
thousand shillings. <laughs> so it's twenty five, and the units are because force is in newtons, and the extension is in meters. So the k there will be newton a meter. It is eh? someone is giving me wrong answers. It is. 25 eh? 250 so there is a zero here missing 250,000 newtons per meter cube that is the k now they gave us a second case i'm going to change color to mean second case there is a second case they have given us that when the force is reduced by a half that means we should get the new force F2 by getting a half of 500. So what is the force? If I get half of 500, I think, you know, that will be, uh, this one will be by one, then by two, we get 250 Newtons. So that means a force which was 500 was reduced by its half and it became 250 Newtons. Now that means I have F2, the force two as 250 Newtons. Force two as 250 Newtons. I have extension E, I don't have it. I have uh, K as a 250 and then one, two, three. Now what you are going to do is you're going to substitute for uh, force is equal to ke you are going to substitute for what you have you have force the force is 250 newtons and we have k which is which is 250 then 1 2 3 then times e where E is the extension caused by force two. So what would be our extension that we get? People with calculators. What will be our extension? 250 divided by 250,000. So the extension is equal to, you write for me in the chart. Excuse me. So what will be our E for those ones who are calculating? Our E is zero point zero zero one meters. But they didn't ask for E. The people who read for us the question uh, were clear and they were asking us for the new length if the original length was 10. So we know that extension 
is equal to new length minus the original length. That one I told you at the beginning of the lesson. So if our extension is 0 0.001, And then our L, the new length is what we are looking for, but we have the original as 10 centimeters. And if you change 10 centimeters to meters, I think you get 0 0.1. So they are asking for the new length. That means what you are going to do is to make L the subject. So we are going to have our 0 0.01, because it's a negative this way, we want to remove it and take it to this side, becomes a positive. So we'll be getting our 0 0.001 plus 0 0.1 is equal to L. Therefore, our length L will be equal to 0 0.101 meters. So our new length will be that one there, 0 0.101 meters. Okay. I'm going to entertain some questions uh, about what we discussed. Yes, Amara. Teacher, I wanted to ask, where did you get the 0 0.1? What is 10 divided by, what is 10, 10 centimeters if they ask you to change it to meters, what do you get? Okay. You've seen it, eh? Yes, I've seen it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other question about what we have just discussed? Now, for a friend who has asked what force constant is, uh, force constant is like the measure of stiffness of a, an elastic material. Because when we put a force on it, it changes the length. So that means it's like we are changing shape. So the measure of how stiff it is, is measured with uh, that one, what you call the first constant. For someone who has asked and write it as the measure of stiffness of a, a material or of a spring, if it is supposed to be spring. Yes, we see Patricia. Okay, sir. The the same number. The force constant. I mean, the force is equal to the constant and the extension. It, mm. And then our constant here is two fifty thousand. Mm. Is it okay? Is it like for the for that number? Like 
the the constant in all the forces as in the force one and force two should be the same yes if they talk about constant for a, a certain spring or for a certain number then that constant is for everything that is there because it's the same spring we are dealing with each spring will have the same constant for all forces and their extensions can we do one more question if we have it someone can read it for us we put it down and then we we call it a day agatha read for us the question okay the question says a spring constant of natural length Excuse, excuse me, Agatha, as you read, uh, there are some people who don't have the question, so you read slowly so that okay. they, can, they can write. Okay. A spring constant of natural length 8.0 times 10 power negative 2 meters. A spring constant of natural length 8.0 times 10 power negative two meters extends by 2.5 times 10 to power negative two millimeters. A spring constant of natural length 8.0 times 10 to power negative two meters extends by 2.5 times 10 to power negative two millimeters. Mm. when a weight of 10 newtons is suspended on it mm. find the spring there are two questions one says find the spring constant and the other says determine the extension when a weight of 15 newtons is suspended on the spring when when a weight of 15 newtons is suspended mm. on the string Okay. Uh, whoever has the video on, please put it off. You are disrupting my my screen here. So we have. Uh, uh, those questions there, they want us to, first of all, uh, extends by. So they want us to get the K, which is the spring constant. And then we also get uh, the extension caused by a force, which is this. So when they say natural length, they mean original length, but according to what we have, I don't think we need to use the natural length anywhere. So we are going to focus on the extensions and the forces. Now, from what we know, we start from what we know always, that F is equal to, a constant which is the first constant k then times e we are lucky we have e1 and f1 so we are going to have f1 being equal to k e1 so our f1 is 10 newtons but our e1 is in millimeters so you help me change to meters now if they say 2.5 times 10 power negative two. They have written for you in scientific notation, but you can change it to zero point. They say negative two, it's like out of a hundred. So we have 2.5, uh, then divide by 100, which is like having 25 over, uh, 10,000, I think something like that. So you press for me on your calculator. If you have two, 
uh, 0.5, you have 2.5, and you divide by a 1,000, which answer do you get? I think you'll, get, you'll be getting your extension one. Your extension one, you'll be getting it as zero point zero zero two five. Um, I've calculated with. 2.5 divided by 1,000, because we are changing to meters, it is 0 0.0025 meters. That is our E1, the extension one. We are dividing. When you see negative two, that means you are dividing by two zeros, eh? a, a number which has one and then two zeros. That's why I'm dividing by, uh, oh, sorry. This one had to be, sorry, 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 sorry. Let us correct it. I think that's why I had many hands coming up here. We are going to have, Ah, the thing is 2.5 divide by, because it is power negative two, then it is out of a hundred. So if you do that, you get your answer there as 2.5 divide by 100. The, the two is the two zeros that you are seeing there. That is the use of the negative to there. Negative means we divide, positive means we multiply. Uh, so the answer we'll be getting there is 0 0.025. But these ones, remember, are millimeters. I just wanted us to change it to something that we can. Uh, is the use. So what about when we change from millimeters to meters? So you will get that 0 0.025. And then you divide it by, because they are meters, you are going to divide them by a thousand because we are changing from millimeters to meters. I don't know what you will get but you try getting the answer. So we are going to be getting 0 0.00, I think there are four zeros here, and then two five meters. What I'm doing was to change from to change our extension from millimeters to meters because we need to get K in newtons per meter as the SI unit. So that means that if we go back to our uh, equation here, our first one, they read it to us as 10 newtons and those 10 newtons cause an extension of 0 0.0025, then times k. Some people who have their calculators, you would be having, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You'll be having 2.5 times 10 power negative 5 on your calculators. So we are going to get the value of k sorry, by dividing both sides by this extension here.
So what will be the value of K for those ones who have calculators? Our K will be equal to, we have we got 40,000, my dear. What will our K be? 10 divided by that one. So it's 400,000, K okay, is 400,000, 400,000 Newtons a meter. That is our Roman one. And Roman two, they ask us what would be the E if the f is 15 so that one i'm going to leave you to do it for me that one i'm going to leave you to do it for me because you all know that now force 2 which is 15 force 2 would be equal to k that we have got times e so they want us to get the value of e2 I'm waiting now for the answers in the chat. The value of E2, what will be the value of E2? Okay, which answer do we have, my dear friends? Okay, thank you for getting me the extension. Extension two 
is equal to uh, some people are getting 3.75 times 10 power negative five meters. Of course, that is a uh, uh, the correct answer and that will be our yes people who have 0 0.000375 that is the answer also okay that is our answer Okay, now if you have all got that answer, thank you for. Uh, I have a question. Last lesson when we do use force out of extension, what does it mean? Okay, someone is asking me that last time we are using uh, f out of e, f1 out of e1 is equal to. Sorry, is equal to f2 out of e2 what does it mean now you realize that when i get a ratio of f out of e for example here it gives me a k and it's the same k that we use even in the first case so what does what this statement mean is that if they have not asked you to get the k and they ask you for extension for the second force. You don't need to get K first. You just need to write F1 out of E1 is equal to F2 out of E2, because all of them will be equal to a constant. So you don't need to get this constant. You just need to substitute for F1 and E1 and F2 and E2 to get uh, your answer. All right, now I think that will be the, uh, that we'll stop there for today. If God helps us and we have the lesson next week, we'll continue uh, with mechanical properties. There is a, a small, small part that is remaining. And then each one of us uh, will be happy as we go for our uh, for our new term, when you find mechanical properties, you will find it so easy because you will have gone through it with us here at help. So I'm requesting one of you to kindly pray for us as we end our lesson.
one person kindly go for us. Yes, James. The James, your hand is up. You pray for us. Okay, everyone, please stand ourselves and we pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this wonderful time. We want to thank you for this wonderful lesson that we have learned. And we do pray that everything that we have learned be on our minds, King of Glory, so that every question which comes across us, we can answer it perfectly. Lord, may you come and protect us, Father. Continue giving us knowledge and wisdom of understanding. Continue blessing all our teachers that teach us, Father. Thank you, King of Glory. You cast out the demons, Father King of Glory, which want to mislead our lives in Jesus' name. And do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you, James, for reading. And for those people who have kept on throughout the lesson, thank you for being patient. Now, whenever you get into a Zoom lesson, and maybe you missed the first lesson or you have come in late it is okay if you uh, it is okay if you write in the chat that i missed the first lesson may i have some so that your friends can help you out or even the teacher can help you out through uh, what you missed than saying i'm not understanding i've gone as I saw some people writing in the chat. So it's better to be patient with time. You pick a thing or two, and then everything is, is well. So allow me wish you a good evening and a nice time. We meet again next week. Bye.